Hello, welcome again. As I uh, spoke before, I like the Chilton type of, of schematic, especially for beginners. I love the layout. It's easy to see. See, this is a powertrain control module. This is the computer. Look how easy it is to see. Everything is straightforward. Let's start from the beginning, but I want to show you some mistakes that sometimes they make. And maybe you'll pick up on it, maybe you won't, but this is interesting. Anyway, here are all the sensors. Here are something called fuel injectors. Just looking at them, how many cylinders do you think is on a, this BMW? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. This means it's a V6. That's the hint number one, okay? The other ones are sensors. And where do sensors go? To the powertrain control module. What do they do? They give information about air, about fuel, about a uh, vacuum, about load condition to the engine, about the temperature of the air, the weight of the air. All these things are taken into consideration so it can adjust the fuel according to the air to get the correct ratio. Now, I don't want to skip too far, but as you see over here, this is 12 volts. Now, I want to show you something. This one does give you the battery. However, they made a mistake. Look. They put it backwards. This big line over here, this big line over here, this is ground, physical ground, going to the uh, engine block. The, the big line over here is the positive. The small line is the negative. They have it reversed. Sometimes I, I see these, these errors, but it doesn't take away from the greatness of of how they lay out and everything these are these are the top these are the best to me at, at least but anyway the the positive is going to ground and the negative is feeding everything well anyway so actually in reality this is supposed to be this is supposed to be the positive here the the, the long line and the small line going to ground okay so it is what it is but anyway like I said, like this. Anyway, so we know 12 volts comes over here. Again, we have a relay. Now, it's going to feed. It's going to feed. B plus is going to feed all these sensors, all these injectors on one side of the injectors. Now, the other side of it is controlled by the computer as input. All these sensors are inputs. Everybody asks me which are inputs. Sensors are inputs. Crankshaft sensor, uh, oxygen sensor, uh, mass airflow sensor. Why? Because they're telling the computer the present moment what's going on. So it's an input. What would be an output? Don't have to look too far. Look, what something that the computer controls. Solenoids, motors, uh, relays. What are here? Fuel injectors. So... The positive is over here. See all this? This is common. All of these get 12 volts. See how they are connected together? If one gets 12 volts, they all get 12 volts, like parallel. And so the B+, plus, which is the 12 volts, we have on, over here on this side. Now, now the question is, what, come, what goes to the other side? You know what goes to the other side? It gives it a ground. Who gives it a ground? Do you see a physical ground here? Do you see a physical ground going to these? No. I see it going to the computer. I see six lines going to the computer. So what should you think? You should, you know the first thing come to your mind? Oh, okay. PCM, abbreviation. It's giving it a ground. Or it's controlling these on and off. How? By giving it a ground. How? Something called pulse width modulation, which I'm not going to get into this and you need a scope to see it but anyway doesn't matter the first thing if this if a b plus is here right away come to my mind okay the other side needs a ground something has to give it a ground or something has to control the ground on and off what does that well right here the computer okay the other sides of of all these valves and all these uh, uh, um uh, what do you call it? sensors and valves and all these things they go to the computer and what are these things these are the pins that it goes to okay and these are the color of the wires that we just spoke about before in the other video so if you if you're not familiar look at the other one then but let's see what's going on here i'll show you something that i i thought was a little amusing but anyway current goes here which one goes first this side or that side this side always coil 
this one is triggered and it goes to this so we have b plus on this side what do we need on the other side we need a ground who gives it a ground look what's over here what is it connected to it's only connected to one thing a computer so the computer gives it a ground right a virtual ground not a physical ground i always call it what happens after that then well 12 volts here 12 volts here going to which pin to this pin right this gets 12 volt well actually no i'm sorry if this is ground this will get maybe probably zero volts or something like that or maybe there's a transistor in here like we had another example or some other device could be a voltage there but it'd be less than 12 volts that's for sure we don't know what's in here but this goes over here. This is closed. 12 volts here. 12 volts to all these things like we spoke about. 12 volts to what, what else? You have lines over here also. Look at this. You have oxygen sensors. They need 12 volts. So when you get a code, 12 volts, or you get a code on a scanner, you look it up, or you go to AutoZone, and they say, uh, I have a code, right? Check engine light. And they say, oh, oxygen sensor. How do you know it's oxygen sensor? Maybe it's the connector. It doesn't have 12 volts. How do you know? You don't know. So what are you going to do? You're just going to say oxygen sensor. You have to make sure there's 12 volts. You have to make sure of, other, of all these things that has voltage. You have to make sure every, every one of these sensors has 12 volts to it. Maybe there's corrosion in the connector. You don't know. Anyway, any besides that, these are pins over here. Okay? These are connectors again. Camshaft position sensor, crankshaft position sensor. The position of the crankshaft. The position of the camshaft. What is it? It's an input. How many wires do you see here? One, two, three. Three wires here. Right? How many wires over here? Intake air temperature. The temperature of the air coming in. The air ducts. How many? One wire here. Then there's another wire here. Going over here to this one. Okay? I'll make another video about those things. But anyway, anyway, that's that. So now, we said this is six cylinders, six fuel injectors. What should pop into your head? If there's six fuel injectors, if it's a, if it's a coil system, ignition coil system like this, we should have six ignition coils. Well, look, one, two, right? Three, four, five, six. So the second, these are actually the secondary lines. These are the primary lines. Okay, I'm not going to get too technical. But anyway, you should have six, and you do have six. Okay? Six ignition coils and to going to where? The spark plugs. Six fuel injectors for six cylinders and six ignitions. Sometimes you have a uh, 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 coil on, on plug. Sometimes you have a different system, but this is the way it operates. Anyway... But power control module controls the ignition coil. It controls it. So it's like an output. Okay? That's what I wanted to explain. One last thing that I, I noticed over here. Uh, like I said, I found something amusing. What don't you see over here that you always see on every schematic and every video that I've shown you? Guess what you don't see from here to here besides this being backwards? You don't see a fuse here. How is that possible that there is no fuse going to the computer you can fry the computer the only logical thing to me is they forgot to put a fuse here or something in the schematic because i mean what happens if there's a short through here or through here through the computer <coughs> that's a short from b plus to ground perhaps right you're gonna fry the computer obviously the battery is gonna be shorted it's impossible not to have a fuse. Impossible. That, so anyway, I picked up on things like that, and I'm sure you also picked up. Please go to my channel for so many transistor circuits. Uh, this is for BMW, an older version. But like I said, look how straightforward it is. You really understand, I believe, what's going on. It's easier as opposed to the other ones. You see all the connections going right here, 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 here. Easy to the eye. Easy, very easy. Once you see this going to here... 12 volts that's it let's say you i don't i come over here to this sensor i don't have 12 volts you know what i'm, I'm gonna do i'm gonna go to the relay and see if i get 12 volts okay then i'm if this if i don't get 12 volts over here if i don't get 12 volts over here i go over here to see if i have 12 volts right if i don't get 12 volts then maybe the fuse which is not even here is the problem however like i said you can't always jump things because if I'm going to jump this, like people always say, how do I know what's in here? How do I know? Maybe it's going to ground. Maybe it's going to a transistor. How do I know? You don't know. You can't always jump things. 
unless you see what's in the schematic. Anyway, please go to my channel, Joe Electronics Schematics for Auto. My other one, Automotive Electronics Schematics for, uh, for, for Auto. Uh, and you'll see many, many explanations, simplified, I hope. And I hope the day will come when I'm just waiting for to get a scope, a small scope. I think it's the best scope to do hands-on. And that's the only way to see a signal. But you will see a small scope. It is very small, but it gives you the readings, peak-to-peak -peak readings, uh, frequency reading, period readings. And I will do it on uh, first on a card that is good, not go to a card that's bad. How are you going to know what's bad if you don't know what's good? First, you have to know the signal that's good. Then you'll understand stand when, when you see a voltage that's not good. Right? If, if you don't know that this is 12 volts, if I didn't tell you this is 12 volts, and I said, let's troubleshoot, right? And we go and we measure, and I measure 5 volts. Maybe, maybe that's correct. How do I know that it's not? Maybe, how do I know that it's supposed to be 12 volts? Well, because you're learning the correct way. Same thing to me. It makes no sense to go to a card that has a problem I'll, without you knowing the voltages, the signals looking like, and everything else. It just doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, thanks for watching.